Welcome back. In the previous video, we have done with addition of vectors. And you have seen how vector can be added either by triangular, parallelogram law, or magic vector in head-to-tail pattern. In this, in this class, we start the other vector operation, which is product of vector. And we have two types of products. We have gross product, we have gross product. What is the meaning of this? When you are looking for two vectors, you know that we are still dealing with two vectors, yes. When you are dealing with two vectors and you want to find their gross product, their dot product, sorry, dot product, it means that you want to find the sum of the magnitude of the vector. For example, look at the vector here, vector A, vector B. By finding their dot product, it means that you want to find a single value, which is the length, the overall length of the two vectors combined. And we call it the projection of the vector. Now, in scenario, if it is necessary at some times that the best way we can find the total length of a vector or the resultant length from two vectors is by using dot product. This application is very common in physics. For example, when we get to the work done, you will encounter dot product or first multiply by distance or displacement, sorry. First multiply by first dot product of all displacement. But to let us know what we are going to tackle today, what is the meaning of dot product? Dot product means a product that combines two vectors into ordinary scalar quantity. So these two vectors will give you ordinary scalar quantity. No more vector will arise. So it is a single way to turn vector into scalar. So if you want to turn two vectors into scalar, use dot product. And the formula for doing that is that you need to know the angle between the vector, the length of the first vector, the length of the second vector. So this one is telling you that the dot product of the two vector, are you getting me now? The dot product of the two vector is equal to magnitude of the vector A multiplied by magnitude of the vector B cos theta. You see, finding the magnitude of vector A and vector B can be complicated if vector A and vector B are given as component vector. That is to say, if each of the vector here have more than one component, then you need a way to find their magnitude first before you plug them into this equation. And you can also find the theta here by applying this formula, but you cannot find both at the same time. Now, for dot product, there are two ways to multiply two, uh, two vectors. The dot product uh, produces a scalar quantity. It has no direction. It can be pretty easy uh, computed from geometry. It can be easily computed from components. That is to say, if each of the vectors here have more than one component. Now, if the vector is given in form of what? IJK extension, which is what unit vector. What you are going to do is that what? Com collect I to I, J to J, K to K. And for I to I, J to J, K to K, answer is one. Any other combination, answer is what? Is zero. Let me give an example on that, this one. For example, let us say you have two vectors. One is two I plus three J. And another is what? 4i plus 2j. So what is, the, what is the resultant of this vector? The resultant of this vector is equal to what? 2 squared plus 3 squared. The resultant of this vector is equal to what? 4 squared plus 2 squared. Everything square root. So you apply Pythagoras to this. You apply Pythagoras to this. This is two vector entirely that you can find the resultant from their components. So once you have find their resultants from their component, you can then progress to find their, what we call, to find their cosine rule, to, to find their dot product, which is not a very difficult task. The reason why you are doing this, if it is, this is, in this case here, this vector, I must let you know that you can do addition on them, 
you can do dot product on them, you can do gross product on them. To do addition on them, you just simply add the like components. The like components. Are you getting me now? To do dot product on them, you multiply like components. Let us say that this is vector A, this is vector B. Are you getting me now? That is to say we can find A plus B and we can find A dot product of what? Of B. To find A plus B, it means that you should add the like component because you know from your mathematics, introductory mathematics, plus and minus cannot combine to something that are of the same unit. It only combines something that have the same unit. Since i is, I is the same, 4 plus 2, 6, 3 plus 2, 5. So a plus b is equal to what? 6i plus what? 5j. But what about a dot b? You multiply like components. Because i times i will give you 1, j times j will give you 1. Any other combination is equal to 0. So this is equal to what? 2 times 4, 8i, plus what? 3 times 2, that is 6j. So in this case, this is how to find the dot product of the vector. The basic principle is that i dot i is equal to 1, j dot j is equal to 1, k dot k is equal to 1. Now, this is the gross product. Gross product will give you another vector that is perpendicular to the two vectors that are multiplied. The meaning of this is that if you want to find the gross product of this vector A and B, by the time you find their gross product, their gross product will be equal to what? Vector C, and it will be perpendicular to A and also perpendicular to B. It will be at angle 90 degree to A, and it will be also be angle 90, to, angle 90 degree to B. That the, and, and, the, 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 for, for, for gross product, this is the formula. Magnitude of A multiplied by magnitude of B multiplied by sine theta. Where theta is the angle between the two vectors. So you can see what this vector is doing. You can see what this vector is doing. Look at the rotation. You will see that one vector does not rotate, and two vector is rotating. The vector B, the vector, sorry, the vector with color B, it is the resultant of multiple of this vector red and this vector gray that is perpendicular to them. And the rotation of B will cause this particular vector to change direction either downward or upward. This procedure that you see here is called the typical application of right-hand rule. In the right-hand rule, what they mean is that if you point your, if you have your right hand like this and your thumb crossed like that, are you getting me now? Touch a way that one of your finger represents one of that vector, the call of the remaining vector. The call of these vectors. Now listen, now listen, 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 listen. This is the green vector. This is the green vector that does not move. Why this is the red vector that represents the call of the hand that is moving? The direction of this B vector will be the direction of the thumb here. That is to say, if you stretch your right hand hand like this, in such a way that, ah, I'm so sorry that you can't see what I'm doing. But I have tried enough to illustrate this particular right hand rule. But the best thing I can do for you is to give you a video on it so that you will see what it is meaning of that particular right hand rule. If you don't understand what this vector is doing. So we have talked about the gross product and when we are talking about the gross product, the surface, the, the, the gross product corresponds to the surface area covered by the two vector. So according to the principle, 
This is the principle of our gross product. This is the principle of our gross product. I want you to follow one Levitical rule. We have I, we have J, we have K in that direction. Are you getting me? In that direction. If you take I, if you take I and multiply it by J, you take I and you multiply it by J, what is left? K. So that, that I just say answer is K. But if you take the opposite, answer will be equal to what? Minus K. If you take J and you multiply it with K, please follow this convention. It's very, very important. Are you getting me? Follow this convention. It's very, very important. Important. If you have J and you multiply it by it by K, what is left? It is left with I. If you multiply K with I, what is left is what is J. So this is the basic principle behind gross product. And we are going to use one example to see what we are going to get. So let me use one example in this place so that you can see what we are talking about. Let's say we have vector 2i plus 3j and 4i minus 2j. And you are to find the gross product. This is vector A. This is vector B. And you are to find the gross product of A and B. That is gross product of A and B. The meaning is that find the surface area that will be formed by this if these two vector is combined. In that scenario, what do we need to do? You can find the gross product by multiplying this thing out. And for you to multiply it out, what you need to do is very simple. Take this one first. Use it to multiply everything here. That is to say, 2i will multiply, that is 2i from the vector a, will multiply 4i minus 2j. Is that not it? Take this 3 again. That is the second component. Each component will multiply this. So take the second component. This is plus 3j. Is that not it? Multiply by what? 4i minus 2j. Oh yeah, close the bracket. Oh yeah, expand this one out. 2i multiplied by 4i. What is the answer? In this case, i gross i, if they are the same, answer is equal to 0. This is, this is equal to what? 0. Because i gross i is equal to 0. 2i multiplied by minus 2j. If we have i and j, what are we going to have? That is k. That is to say, this one is equal to what? Minus 4, 4k. So let us see the second one. 3j multiplied by i, what are we going to have? This is equal to what? Yes, I don't get it right. 3j multiplied by 4i, answer should be equal to... 12k and 3j multiplied by this is equal to 0. Now, if we are not mistaken, if we are not mistaken, the answer that is left here is equal to uh, is zero because we have i and j but what we resolve into is k so we are having okay we are to add together please we are to add together so let us add this two together this is minus four plus twelve answer is equal to what eight k so 
A gross B is equal to 8K. Is equal to 8K. That is, if you multiply the two vectors, you are going to get a vector that is only in that particular component. Because here, you have I, you have J, but you resolve the word to K. So this is the vector that will be perpendicular to them. Are you getting me now? And the absolute value of the gross product of there is called what surface area. The meaning of that is that if you find the absolute value of this, the resultant of this, what is the resultant of this? That is square, what was square and square root. Answer is equal to what? Answer is equal to it. That is to say the surface area of this vector is equal to what? Pythagoras theorem of this particular vector. If you find the Pythagoras theorem of this vector, you are going to get the word surface area. But I'm still not, I'm still not, not gallant with this thing. Because there are some, there are so many things that I really want to extract. There are many things I really want to extract. I want you to see the physical interpretation in terms of geometry and other aspects. And of course, you see that this formula is telling us that the area is equal to what? When we take the gross product, then you need to find the what? Absolute. You, are, you need to find their resultant. The resultant of the gross product. Of course, this is a single line that you need to apply your Pythagoras theorem on. Theorem on. Now, I don't know how it will lead to that because Pythagoras theorem is used to find the length of a line. How will it be equal to the surface area? And I think it's not to be the surface area. This is because this is the what the product of two lines. This is the product of two lines. So that is all about that. The basic principle that you need here is that for gross product, for gross product, apply this particular rule. This thing is called Levita rule. If you don't know it, there's no need for you to know the name now, but you just know how to apply the rule. This cyclic permutation, okay? It's a cyclic permutation. And of course, it is not clear. If you are not with me from beginning, you may not know how to apply this rule. You have I, take the arrow. You have J, take the arrow. You have K, then close the arrow. So you have I, J, so K will be here. You have J, K, I will be here. You have K, I, you are, that is J will be here. This is what we call cyclic permutation. If you can remember this, you are not going to make any problem. You are not going to make any mistake. Are you getting me? For you TME students, I will give you exercises that will enable you to see various applications of this. I may give you three-dimensional vector so that you'll be able to find the resultant as, as well as what you'll be able to work with resultant, you'll be able to work with magnitude, you'll be able to work, sorry, you'll be able to work with uh, resultant, which is also magnitude, you'll be able to work with dot product, you'll be able to work with gross product until you know how to do it very well. So this is the end of this class. I will meet you in the other class. Thank you for listening. A, B, P.